South China Morning Post, 21st of April 2024, How China and Russia Attempt to Forge Closer Cultural Relations Through Dancing and Pancakes Although they are fierce rivals, China and Russia pretend to be pals. A group of people, primarily young Chinese, celebrated the end of winter in Beijing in true Russian fashion on a breezy March afternoon, just as the Russian election was underway. They celebrated Maslanitsa, an Eastern Slavic folk celebration, by dancing and eating pancakes with Russians dressed traditionally. They did so in a 1950s Soviet-style exhibition center constructed in response to former Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev's visit. Calvin Yan, a 21-year-old studying logistics management, was one of the people enjoying the celebration. He claimed that he developed an interest in Russian culture as a 15-year-old after watching The Dawns Here Are Quiet, a movie based on Boris Vasilyev's book about a group of female soldiers in World War II. Yan stated, The song caught Yusha and the sense of strength it delivered immediately drew me in. The more I study Russia, the more its strength strikes me, in its literature, music, and history. The semi-official Russian-Chinese Committee for Friendship, Peace and Development organized over a thousand locals to celebrate Maslanitsa. These cultural interactions may become more common in the upcoming months as the two neighboring countries commemorate 75 years of diplomatic ties. Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping agree that 2024 and 2025 will be years of culture. This is part of Beijing and Moscow's efforts to get closer in response to mounting Western pressure. While there was a lot of connection between the governments of the various countries, Yang Cheng, executive president of the Shanghai Academy of Global Governance and Area Studies, stated that this was not the situation for the people of those countries. Yang stated that people-to-people -people relations are more critical in cultural exchange and don't fully align with the so-called hot politics between the two countries. For this reason, enhancing cross-cultural interactions even more makes sense. He claimed it moves the focus of bilateral ties from high-level politics, including the political or security issues, down to interactions between people, emphasizing cultural linkages. That's just as significant as the country's political relationship. Yang stated that considering the cultural and historical distinctions between Russia and China might also help lower miscommunications. People naturally have distinct perspectives on certain issues, for example, on the idea of the international order, the concept of territory, and history, he continued. A different student during the Maslanitsa festival stated that most Chinese, particularly the younger generation, held stereotypes about Russia. A lot of my friends just know that Russia is a big country, said Beijing-based international relations student Bing Chen. But I believe there are other things we should be aware of, like the various cultures and ethnic groups, well-known books, and the best art in the world. Chen mentioned that he enjoyed watching Les Ginka videos on the internet. Les Ginka is a fast-paced traditional Caucasian dance. From ballet to Tchaikovsky, Russian culture has a unique position in society. However, since Putin invaded Ukraine in 2022, Russian art and artists have become increasingly unpopular in the West. This includes the Cannes Film Festival declaring that it would no longer welcome official Russian delegations or permit the attendance of anyone connected to Moscow and the primarily closed doors to Russian performers at organizations like the Metropolitan Opera in New York. Putin, who easily won the presidency last month, is now attempting to increase cultural exchanges with China to ease his isolation from the West. As a result, some of Russia's best performers are now present there. Last year, the Bolshoi Ballet and St. Petersburg's Marinsky Theater Symphony Orchestra went on tour in China under the direction of Russia's most well-known conductor, Valery Gergiev. In honor of Ilya Rapin's 180th birthday, the National Museum of China in Beijing will also host an exhibition of the realism painter's creations. In January, Putin signed the Years of Culture Directive to further develop Russia-China ties and expand bilateral relations in the field of culture. According to state news source Sputnik, the Russian Culture Ministry plans to bring Chinese filmmakers to Russia and has entrusted a committee with organizing cultural exchanges with China. China will host the Years of Culture's inaugural ceremony next month, as stated by Tatyana Golikova's office, Russia's deputy prime minister. Over 230 activities are scheduled in 51 Chinese and 38 Russian cities, ranging from theater and music to cinema and museum exchanges. At a meeting with Russian officials on April 11, Golikova stated, 
cooperation with China is among the most important areas of our foreign policy, according to a government release. I am confident that the years of culture will strengthen cultural exchanges, strengthen links between our nation's pertinent institutions, and pave the way for new, fruitful areas of collaboration. Moscow also hopes that more Chinese youth will pursue further education in Russia rather than Europe or the US. Russian and Chinese colleges have formed collaborations in various fields, including technology, physics, astronomy, medicine, and the arts. At Vladivostok's Far East Federal University, more than 250 Chinese students enrolled in a Russian language course earlier this month, marking the first intake of students since the outbreak. After four months of education, they will take exams to get admission to Russian universities. Over 12,000 Russian students are studying in China, and about 40,000 Chinese students are learning in Russia. Moscow will provide 1,000 scholarships for Chinese students this year and next year. A, a group from 17 Russian universities visited Beijing, Henan, Shanxi, and Chongqing last month to increase educational contacts to increase educational contacts. The representatives of the universities advertised their enrollment strategies, campuses, and amenities at a college exhibition held at the Russian Cultural Center in Beijing. Skoltech, also known as the Skokovo Institute of Science and Technology in Moscow, was one of them. It was established in 2011 in collaboration with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Last year, Skoltek shifted its focus to China following MIT's termination of the collaboration in opposition to Russia's incursion into Ukraine. With English lectures, free tuition, health insurance, and monthly scholarships of 40,000 to 50,000 rubles, used for 37,546 US dollars, Skoltek is attempting to entice Chinese students. Elena Smolkova, a Skoltek spokesperson, stated, Many of our students were from Europe, but because of the war, we are looking to extend cooperation with countries in Asia and Africa. According to Wang Wei, founder of admissions consultant Kunshu International, interest in studying in Russia is being driven by closer political and economic relations. Russian-educated Chinese students would be ideal candidates for these positions. The sanctions imposed by the West have caused many Chinese companies, in industries ranging from energy to agriculture, to rush into Russia, Wang stated. Russian-educated Chinese students would be ideal candidates for these positions. Yet, in light of the attack on a Moscow music hall that occurred last month, which left at least 144 people dead, he added that some students who were thinking about attending Russian institutions would want to consider other options. Many parents are extremely concerned, and I believe that many families may choose the latter if given a choice between Russia and a nation with comparable living expenses, like Malaysia. According to Li Bingmei, head of Beijing's AS Pushkin Center of Russian Language, the attack will not stop Chinese students. It is a major shock to everyone in the short run, she remarked. However, those who wish to go will go regardless, 